Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Safari console. The Safari console has changed quite a bit over the past couple of years. It used to look a lot like the Chrome console, and basically it was the same developer console as was in Chrome. And then they split off into two different directions. And now the Safari console is actually quite a bit different from Chrome, but it's got quite a bit of functionality that you might find useful. So I wanted to give you the basics of the Safari console in this video. To demonstrate the console, I'm going to use a very basic index.html file, which just has a title in the head, as well as a little bit of style for the heading. And in the body, all I've got is a heading and a paragraph. And on the paragraph, I've got one ID attribute. And I've got this loaded in my Safari browser. So the first thing I'm going to do is to activate the developer console, or as Safari calls it, the web inspector. And so to do that, you need to go to Safari Preferences and choose the Advanced tab. And then make sure that you've got show develop menu in the menu bar checked on. And when you do that, you'll see this develop menu appear up in the menu bar. Now, if you take a look at the develop menu, there's a lot of different options in here. Right now, we're going to be focusing on this show web inspector option. But before I dive into that, I want to show you how you can add a web inspector icon to the toolbar to make it easier to just click on the button to get to the web inspector whenever you want. And the way to do that in Safari is to change the toolbar, to customize the toolbar and add the web inspector icon to your toolbar. So go under View, Customize Toolbar, and you'll see this little web inspector icon right here. And I'm just going to drag it up here like this. And that adds it to my toolbar. And I can click Done. And now to get to the web inspector, I can either use the develop menu and choose show web inspector, or I can just click this little icon right here and it'll bring it up. Okay, so I'm going to make the web inspector nice and big so we can see it. And you'll notice that there are three parts to the web inspector that we see at the moment. And that is we've got this menu bar up here at the top. And then we've got some tabs underneath that. And then we've got this main area down here. And right now we're on the Elements tab. So what this is showing us is the DOM, which is basically the HTML that is being used to create the document in the page. So first, I'll take a look at each one of the icons in this top menu bar and make sure that you know what each one of them does. So these first two icons are basically to position this bottom area down here. So if I click on this, it's going to pop that out into a completely separate window. And you'll see that that's what it did. That's actually handy if you want to have a completely separate window than the main page. I tend to like to keep mine in with the page, but you may prefer to have it completely separate. So I'm going to click this icon right here to put it back into the bottom of the page. Now, if I want it on the side of the page instead of the bottom of the page, I can do that using this icon to switch back and forth between the side and the bottom. So that's what these two icons do. This one is pretty simple. It just reloads the page. So that's very similar to this reload button up here, only it's a little bit closer to your mouse if you're working down here in this area. This button just downloads the page as a web archive, and that just means it's going to download all the resources for the page, all of the HTML, the CSS, the images, etc., into a folder so that you can save that and load it when you're not online. Then we have some statistics about the page here. And these statistics tell you things like how many resources it took to load this page. In this case, all I've got is one index.html file. It does not refer to any images, so I've just got one resource. And in a later video, you'll see for more complicated examples where we've got multiple resources, you'll see this number is larger. This gives you the total amount of data that was loaded in the resources. And this is actually a very small page, so it's only 258 bytes. This is how long it took to load the resource. And then if I had any errors or warnings in the page that would give me the number of console log messages, the number of console error messages, and the number of warnings. This little icon is used to enable inspect mode. And so if I click on that, I can show you what that does. 
if I then select an item in my page, it's going to show me what item in the DOM that corresponds to. So I selected the heading and it selected the H1 element in the DOM down here in this window. If I click it again to activate it again and select the paragraph, it'll select the paragraph in the DOM down here. So this is a good way to figure out in the page what element is corresponding to what item you see in the page, especially if the page is really complicated. That's not always easy to tell. And then finally over here we have a search bar that you can use to search for items and I'll show you an example of that in a later video. Now let's just quickly go through the different tabs and the ones that we'll most commonly be using. The tabs that I most use are the Elements tab, the Resources tab, and the Console tab. Although I do use the other, the other tabs occasionally too. Now one thing that you can do in Safari, which I really like, is you can actually drag these tabs around and put the tabs that you use most often to where they're most handy. So for instance, I tend to drag the Console tab right next to the Elements tab and then the Resources tab right next to the Console tab. And that way my three most commonly used tabs are right next to each other on the left hand side, which makes them very easy to get to. The Elements tab, as I explained earlier, shows you the DOM. In other words, the elements that make up the page. And this is the computed DOM. In other words, it's the, the elements in the page that the browser computes as it loads in your HTML in your file. So this is a text representation of your page. This is actually showing you the objects in the document object model that make up your page. So you can manipulate these and change them, and it will change what you see in the page. The console tab is where you can interact with your page using JavaScript. So for instance, I can type some JavaScript in the console and test some things out. I can interact with the page. So I can even set, you know, new variables and do all the things that I do with JavaScript in the console. The resources tab shows you all of the resources that were loaded with the page. So in this case, I've, again, I've just got one file. Um, so it's a very uncomplicated set of resources that I have got here. But if you have a lot of different images, if you have a lot of different JavaScript files that are used as part of the page, um, a lot of libraries, then you can get access to all those resources that are loaded when you load your page by clicking on the resources tab. This also allows you to see the source in any HTML or CSS or JavaScript file. So that can come in very handy too, particularly when you're debugging. The Network tab shows you all of the different network resources that are loaded and how long it takes to load them, the size, what kind they are, etc. Timelines allows you to keep to kind of assess how long each resource is taking to load and execute. So if, you're, if you've got some JavaScript code that's taking a long time to execute, or you're worried about the page layout taking too long, you can use the timeline tab to analyze that. And I can show you some tips and tricks for that in a later video. The debugging tab is used to primarily is to use to debug JavaScript code and you can set breakpoints and look at the stack and do all the things that are handy to do when you're debugging a program. So that's, uh, that's a very handy thing. And then the storage tab shows you what you have in both local storage and session storage. And if you've read headfirst HTML5 programming, we have a chapter in there on web storage and this tab comes in handy when you want to inspect what you're storing in local storage um, and you can test that, inspect it, and even change it if you want using this tab. Let me go back to the elements tab very quickly and show you the sidebar, which is this little icon right here. So it says show the detail sidebar. And if I click on that, then that's going to give me some more details about the elements that I have selected over here in the elements tab. So you can see when I select on the heading, it's showing me the information about the heading element. And if I click on the paragraph element, then it's showing me that. And it's, uh, for instance, this has an ID attribute. So it's showing me that it has an ID attribute over here. And it'll actually show me all different kinds of properties about the element that's selected, uh, including all of the different properties that um, are available on that element. I can also look at the style of the page. And in this case, I have one style rule uh, associated with the heading. So if I click on that, you can see this style rule for the font family, which is what I set in here in my CSS. 
Here you can also edit and add style, change style, play with it. So you can kind of design on the, on the fly with your document if you want to play around with different styles. And I'll show you in a later video how to do that in Safari. Finally, I wanted to show you this one last quick thing. If you're looking at different resources and you want to get a quick console, notice down here in both the elements and the resources tab, you have this quick console available to you. So let's say I am in the resources tab and I just want to do something quick in JavaScript. I can just click here and, and type some JavaScript to get access to the document. So I might want to say var p equals document.get element by ID and give it the ID. So I'm going to say main content. And now P is the variable that I have defined so I can access that and get access to that in the in the quick console instead of having to jump back and forth between the console and the resources tab. Although notice when I do switch back and forth, the quick console tab goes back to being the normal size. And so I have to start interacting with it again to see what I typed previously. So that's a quick summary of the Safari Web Inspector, or what I tend to call Developer Console, and the various icons and tabs that are available. And in later videos, I will get into some of the details of some of these tools so that you can use them to debug and analyze your pages.